The book, again, is Egbert the Slightly Cracked Egg by Tom Ross, illustrated by Rex Barron. And if you remember, it's a grade A book. There once was an egg named Egbert. He loved to paint beautiful pictures. Egbert's paintings always cheered up the other eggs in the refrigerator. But one day it was discovered that Egbert was slightly cracked. Eggs of cracked shells were not allowed to stay. Sadly, the other eggs told Egbert he would have to leave. Egbert waved goodbye to his old friends. He hunched his little shoulders, what little shoulders he had, and pressed his shell together so that the crack almost disappeared. Almost. The book might have been easier to read. <laughs> then he set out to look for a new place to live. All of the drawers had labels, but none of them was right for Egbert. He knew he would have to look harder. There had to be some place where he would fit in. Before long, Egbert came to a spot with a beautiful view. If only I could stay here, he thought. Then he had a great idea. No one had to know that he was an egg with a cracked shell. He would paint himself to look like the other things around him. He would blend right in. But just as Egbert was thinking he found the perfect place, a potato plant happened to notice his crack. Split, the plant ordered. Egbert tried not to be discouraged. Maybe I'll have better luck outdoors, he said to himself. The only way down was to jump. Luckily, Egbert landed in a soft bed of flowers. He had never seen flowers before, but they smelled even better than butter and lettuce. Perhaps this is the perfect place for me, he thought. A dab here, a splotch there, voila, Egbert was covered with flowers. But late that afternoon, an angry bee discovered that you cannot get nectar from an egg. Again, Egbert was told to leave. It was getting dark and he still had not found a place to live. Just when he was about to give up all hope, a glimmer of something caught his eye. What beautiful little lights, Egbert whispered. With all his might and twice his usual care, he climbed up the fence. Perfect, Egbert said when he was covered with stars. But the next morning, when the night stars were gone, a cat discovered that Egbert was just an egg with a cracked shell. Scramble, said the cat. Egbert took a hard fall on the sidewalk. Now he was more cracked than ever. As it started to rain, he began to sob. He realized that no matter how he painted himself, he could not hide who he was. Finally, the rain stopped and the sun broke through a crack in the clouds. Egbert began to notice something he had never noticed in his whole life. The world was full of cracks, all sorts of wonderful cracks. Maybe it's not such a bad thing to be slightly cracked, he thought. From then on, Egbert traveled around the world, making new friends and seeing famous cracked sites. But Egbert never forgot his friends back home in the fridge. He painted them beautiful postcards of his travels. His friends were well and truly amazed. They missed him, if the truth be told. To this day, Egbert does not regret being cracked. In fact, he is even a little proud of it. The end. Okay. Many of you have met my best friend, Leah. She came to visit our awesome church this past January. She and I have been friends since childhood. Our parents still live on the same court back home in Rolling Meadows, Illinois. Leah bought me Egbert, the slightly cracked egg, for Christmas one year. It was to kickstart my classroom library, as I hope to be an elementary teacher soon. The inscription she wrote inside was, to my slightly cracked friend. <laughs> and she listed the ways my crafts were important to our friendship. She then wished me luck in my endeavors and told me how great I would be at teaching. I have often reflected
put on this book. I loved reading it to my first classroom full of second graders. I enjoyed sharing it with my middle schoolers as well when I moved to Champlain and started teaching at Jackson Middle School. My reflections often tied into what Pastor Max talked about on Sunday. Which, side note, how do you follow a sermon that gets an applause? <laughs> All I kept thinking about reading, writing this. Okay. Uh, where are we? Pastor Max talked about on Sunday the perseverance of Egbert as well as self acceptance. One lesson Pastor Max discussed is that God loves us just the way we are, despite our flaws and imperfections. Like Egbert, who feels self conscious and ashamed of his cracked shell, we may sometimes feel like we are not good enough for God's love and acceptance. However, just as Egbert learns to accept himself for who he is, we too can trust that God accepts us unconditionally, flaws and all. Another lesson Pastor Max touched on was the importance of treating others with kindness and compassion. Egbert is initially shunned by the other eggs because of his cracked shell, but he ultimately finds it in himself to reach out to his old friends back in the refrigerator and teach them about his new self-awareness and findings that cracks are found everywhere in the world. This reminds us that God calls us to love our neighbors as ourselves, regardless of their differences or imperfections. The fact that he reached out back to his friend who had sent him away really speaks to the kindness in his heart, the same kindness that God places within us when we are sent out to love our neighbors. Pastor Max also touched on perfectionism. Egbert tries to pull off blending in by physically painting himself to look like his surroundings. How many times in life have you tried painting over yourself, metaphorically of course, to blend in or try to be accepted into a group? Finally, the story of Egbert can also be seen as a metaphor for the Christian concept of redemption. Like Egbert, who was initially deemed unfit for use because of his cracked shell, we too may feel broken and unworthy of God's grace. However, just as Egbert is ultimately able to fulfill his purpose as an egg despite his imperfections, we too can find redemption and purpose in our lives through God's mercy and forgiveness. While Egbert's a slightly cracked egg, does not explicitly teach us about God, it does offer valuable insights into how we can live our lives in a way that reflects God's love and grace. As I was preparing my thoughts for this evening, it dawned on me, what if we looked at Edgar's story as an allegory for our lives as God's children? First, we are with our friends in the refrigerator, enjoying our newly found skills like painting and with our peers, the other eggs. This happens to us as toddlers, preschoolers, even young elementary students. We know nothing about labels, differences, and we are genuinely happy and content in our groups and being ourselves. But as we get older, suddenly our friends start to point out our imperfections, tease us for who we are, or reject us for some reason. Think of middle school and high school years, as this is a constant cycle of finding ourselves, trying to fit in, and trying to find our gifts and talents, all while towing that very thin line of peer acceptance. College, young adult years. We think we have a good idea of who we are, but this again can be cyclical as we find our niche in the world, find our people who accept us, and find how we can fulfill our dreams and hopes. Every so often we've all had that potato plant tell us to split, or the bee tells us to buzz off, and the cat tells us to scramble. We all have these figures in our lives who told us to leave, told us we're not wanted, or told us we weren't good enough. So the cycle to find our spot in the world starts again and again until we start to recognize our self-worth and our uniqueness. Plus, let's not forget about that perfectionism piece. Again, 
how we try so hard during this time to fit in with certain peers or within a certain lifestyle. I like to think, as Egbert found that crack in the clouds that day, that relates to where we are in our mid to later adult lives. We are hopeful, full of wonder, full of amazement that we do fit in, or we don't fit in and we don't really care. Those pesky potatoes, bees, and cats still make appearances in our lives, but much more sparingly. We notice the world around us as we get older, maybe start our own families, start traveling, and really appreciate what God has created around us and within us. Unless you've started a family, then you're tremendously tired for many years, always <laughs> trying to appreciate all around you. But I hear that that time does come back when we will again enjoy the world around us and we will be much less tired. But until then, as we grow into our more mature years, we find ourselves like Edward, not only enjoying the world around him with his new self-confidence, but being able to look within himself and reach back out to those who rejected him. The fact that he sends postcards to his refrigerator buddies shows us that he has forgiven them. He has the knowledge, peace, and love found through living his life, the ups and the downs, to forgive and be kind. Have you ever been asked if you could do life all over again? Would you? Many times an answer includes, yes, but only with what I know now. It takes hard work, time, experience, and most importantly, God's love to help us get to accepting ourselves for who we are and trusting that God accepts us unconditionally, flawed and all. As we experience life, we learn the importance of treating others with kindness and compassion. Plus, just as Edward is ultimately able to fulfill his purpose as an egg, despite his imperfections, we too can find redemption and purpose in our lives through God's mercy and forgiveness. I'm so thankful for Leah and her book she bought for my classroom library all those years ago. Many times in my life I have reread that to my slightly cracked friend reading and have found peace and hope in the message that it is okay to be different. That's what makes us special to those around us. It is our flaws that make us fabulous. Accepting that is what makes it possible for us to share God's love with all around us. So to end this reflection tonight, I'm going to ask you to pray with me. Dear Lord, we thank you for accepting us as we are, cracks and all. Thank you for all the experts in our lives who get up each day and live out your love through kindness and acceptance. Please watch over my very own special expert, Leah, as today she had her third, third stem cell transplant to fight multiple myeloma once again. Leah has always shared her joy and love with all around her. She is a person who always finds the positive in situations, finds the uniqueness in all around her, and helps them shine as Egbert did. Help us be more like Egbert and Leah. Amen. Um,